On Monday, August 9th, the UN's science panel published a study that shows how humanity is running out of time to do something about the steady increase in global temperature. On Tuesday, a professor published a short list of simple solutions that would solve the crisis. The professor's article is called We Have Four Years Left to Keep Warming to 1.5 Degrees Celsius. Here's how we can do it. A day after the UN's science panel warned that humanity has only four years left to stop the trend of increasing global emissions, Matthew Patterson, research director of the Sustainable Consumption Institute at the University of Manchester, published a plan for how this trend can be halted. Writing in the conversation, he says to limit the globe's warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. We need to take these fairly simple steps as soon as possible. First, we need to ban all new coal-fired power plants, all new oil and gas operations, and all airport expansions. In essence, the world could agree to a fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty. Existing coal plants could be rapidly replaced with renewable sources of energy, like wind farms. Radical improvements could be made in the energy efficiency of buildings. Instead of using natural gas for heating and cooking in buildings, people should only use electricity. Ground transport could be decarbonized by a shift to electric vehicles, such as electric cars, trucks, buses, and trains. Last, people should move away from private cars toward bicycling, walking, and public transport. Patterson says achieving all of this in 10 years is technically possible, but there are significant obstacles that are fundamentally political. For instance, fossil fuel companies continue to fight to prevent action that threatens their profitability, lobbying governments to weaken legislation and to protect their subsidies. Intense air pollution and a massive sandstorm have combined to turn Beijing's air into a thick orange haze, sending air quality measurements off the charts. The Guardian reports that air quality indexes recorded a shocking rating of 999 on Monday, March 15th, as commuters travel to work through the thick, dark air. Residents in western China said they woke up in the middle of the night struggling to breathe. When Beijing's air quality showed a reading of 999, Tokyo recorded 42 and Sydney 17. Officials posted a warning for sand and dust blowing in from the western desert regions. Sandstorms are relatively common at this time of year and usually attributed to winds blowing across the Gobi Desert but residents said they had not seen one this severe in many years. Large-scale deforestation is considered a big factor in the spring dust storms. Beijing and surrounding regions have been suffering from high levels of pollution in recent weeks, and officials have vowed to crack down on companies that break pollution rules. Sri Lanka's beautiful beaches are being swamped by billions of plastic pellets and toxins as the country deals with a massive and growing environmental disaster. The disaster started when a fire erupted on a container ship after it anchored near the port of Colombo. The ship's owners have been aware of an acid leak on the ship for weeks, but say they could not fix the problem because Qatar and India would not allow the ship to dock there. Here are the details. The BBC reports that Sri Lanka is dealing with a growing environmental disaster as billions of plastic pellets, oil and dangerous chemicals from a sinking ship smother its coastline. The container ship, Express Pearl, left the Indian port of Hazura on May 15th, heading for Colombo. The ship had earlier sprung a leak of highly corrosive nitric acid, but its owners claimed they had been denied permission by both Qatar and India to dock the ship. While it was anchored off Sri Lanka's Colombo harbor, a fire broke out on May 20th. Sri Lankan officials believe the fire was caused by the leaking acid. The ship then burned out of control for two weeks before settling in the shallow waters of the harbor. In that time, hundreds of shipping containers fell into the sea, releasing toxins and billions of plastic pellets into the ocean. The plastic pellets have already covered miles of Sri Lanka's famously beautiful beaches. Experts say the pellets still in the sea could travel as far as India, Indonesia, and Somalia. Local fishermen were told to stay out of the ocean, but the fishermen say they need to fish to survive and will need to be compensated by the government. Sri Lanka has launched a criminal investigation into the disaster and says it will seek compensation. Although the Pacific Ocean takes the prize for most polluted ocean in the world, the Atlantic Ocean is not far behind, and much of the Atlantic's non-degradable trash seems to come from the American city of Baltimore, where people don't seem to care where they dump their trash. But one Baltimore native came up with a smart way to trap mountains of trash before they float into the Chesapeake Bay. Here are the details. 
CNET reports that a new invention has been having great success in solving the problem of plastic trash that flows into the harbor of Baltimore City. The inventor of the machine, former museum director John Kellett, said he came up with the idea when he started thinking of ways to mitigate the mountains of plastic trash that would flow into the harbor every time it rained. Kellett combined a water wheel with a design for a hay baler to create Mr. Trash Wheel, a 15-meter machine weighing nearly 50 tons. The Chesapeake River's current rotates the watermill, powering a system of pulleys that in turn run a large conveyor belt with rake-like teeth that scoop up floating soda cans, plastic bags, bottles, styrofoam plates, cigarette butts, and other detritus. Two long buoys help funnel trash toward Mr. Trash Wheel's maw and into a floating dumpster that's emptied by a small crew of volunteers. Since launching in 2014, Mr. Trash Wheels has intercepted more than 1.5 million tons of garbage. For times when the river isn't flowing fast enough, Mr. Trash Wheel also sports solar panels and batteries. Kellett can turn on the pumps via his smartphone and check on his invention 24-7 via an online webcam. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.